For this tutorial you will need your selected yarn. Now for a washcloth I would highly recommend that you use a cotton yarn just because of the way it's going to be used a cotton yarn is going to be better. I'm going to use Paintbox Cotton Aran because I think this is a really nice weight yarn for a washcloth. The yarn band recommends four and a half millimetres but I'm just going to go up to five millimetre. Feel free to play around a little bit with your um, the size of your hook depending on what yarn you're using. You will also need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to sew in your ends. As always I will leave all information in the description box which is just underneath the video. Go ahead and tap that see more button to see all the links that I provide. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. So you want to begin by creating your slip knot and you can use whichever method you prefer for this. All I would suggest that you make sure that you leave quite a long end so that we can sew that in towards the end. Because you're using this for a washcloth, it's going to get washed quite a bit. So we want to make sure that that end is really nicely sewn in. And we're going to start off by chaining 26. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over pull through, yarn over and pull through. So I am using the paint box Simply Aran and my 28 chains will get me to around seven and a half inches just for your reference but go ahead and pause the video and meet me back in just a moment. So I have just chained my 26 chains and we're ready to get into the pattern now. So we're going to work into the second chain from the hook. We're not going to count the one that's on the hook. This is the first one, this is the second. And we're going to do a double crochet, which is a UK term. In the US this is known as a single crochet. So go ahead and insert your hook into that second chain from the hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop you'll have two loops on the hook and then yarn over, pull through two. So now what we're going to do is double crochet three stitches together. So what we want to do is actually start in this same stitch that we've just done our last double crochet into. So go ahead and insert your hook and then pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on the hook. Go into the next stitch, insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook and then go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then you'll have four loops on the hook. Go into yarn over, turn your hook all the way down, and pull all the way through, and that just crochets all those stitches together. You're then going to chain one, and we're going to do that again, and we're going to start our first stitch into the last stitch that you've just done this cluster of stitches into. So go into that stitch, yarn over and pull through, you'll have two loops on the hook into the next one, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook into the next one, yarn over, pull through, four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn your hook down and pull through all of those loops on the hook and chain one and we're going to repeat this all the way down this chain. So we'll do our first stitch into the last stitch of the cluster insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through. You'll have four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn your hook down and pull through all of those loops, chain one and repeat again. So into that last stitch that we've just done, yarn over, pull through, into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all of those loops and chain one. So you want to pause the video and repeat that all the way down until you get to the end of your chain. Your last stitch will actually be into your last chain. So go ahead, pause the video and I'll meet you back in just a moment. Okay, so I have just come to the end of my first row and as I mentioned, the last stitch will go into the last chain. I'm going to do my chain one and I'm also going to do another double crochet into that last chain as well and that matches what we have done on the other side. So now we're ready to move on to row two. So it's yarn over and turn the work. We're going to do a double crochet into this very first stitch. 
And this pattern is simply going to be a repeat of what we've done already and for every row here on. So we've just done our double crochet. We're going to double crochet three together. So going into that same stitch that we've just worked into, yarn over, pull through, into the top of the next stitch. Now this one might feel a little bit tighter, which is how you know you're on the right track, um, because the middle one of the three together will always feel a bit tighter. So yarn over and pull through, you'll have three loops on the hook, and then insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and you'll have four loops on this hook. So that's our three stitches all together. Yarn over, pull through all three loops, uh, all four loops on the hook, and chain one. So then we're going to go again. So remembering to go into the last stitch that we've just worked into, yarn over and pull through. We'll do our second of our stitches. So this one's going to be feel slightly tighter than the last one. You might have to force it in slightly. Yarn over and pull through. You'll have three loops on the hook and into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You'll have four loops on the hook. Grab the yarn and pull through all four loops and chain one. And you're going to repeat that again. So into the same stitch that we've just worked into, yarn over, pull through, into the next stitch, which will feel a bit tighter, yarn over, pull through, and into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. You'll have four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four loops and chain one. And you're simply going to repeat this all the way until the end of this row. So go ahead, pause the video, work your way to the end of your row and meet me back once you are ready. Okay, so I have just got to the end of my row and I'm going to chain one. Now what it looks like here is it looks like you haven't completely gone to the end, but you want to be really mindful that you're not thinking, oh, I need to move over into this stitch because that's not the case. You then want to do your double crochet into that same stitch, which you've just done your last stitch into, and then you want to chain one, turn your work, do a double crochet into the first stitch, and then start your double crochet three together. And you see it just kind of evens itself out. You will get a slight uneven edge, but we'll sort that out at the end. Um, so from here, you'll just want to do the same thing. So insert your hook into the first stitch or the stitch that we've just gone into, yarn over, pull through, into the next stitch, which will be a little bit tighter, yarn over and pull through, and then into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through all of the stitches, chain one and repeat. So from here on out, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So I'm going to leave you to build your rows. I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like once we've built it. Um, I'll leave the information here of the amount of rows that you need to do, and then we're going to add a little border. So feel free to rewind the video and look at the instructions if you need to, or skip forward a little bit to see what it's looking like so that you've got an idea that you're building it correctly. Okay, so here is my washcloth, what it's looking like after 17 rows. It's such a beautiful texture. Now I'm just going to add a border so that we're um, tidying up these edges a little bit. So after I've done my last or my 17th row, I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to do a double crochet around the post of this stitch that I've just been in. So go ahead and do a double crochet and then I'm going to move across or move down to the next row and do a double crochet. And then when I get to this row, I'm going to move sort of into this space just here. So these rows come up slightly, so I'm actually going to bring that stitch down. So I'm going to go into this gap here and do a double crochet and then into the next row and do a double crochet and then into the gap a little bit further into the work and do a double crochet and do this all the way down until we get to the corner. So I'll just speed this up a little bit and then show you what to do on the corner section.
Okay, so as you get to this corner section, what you want to do is do your stitch in that um, last space as normal. Then you want to do one more, which is going around the corner, and then, and then another one in there, which is starting to go along the edge. So along this edge, what you want to do is go into the center of the little cluster of stitches and then into the gap of the stitches, into the center of the stitches and then into the gap and then continue all the way along to the opposite side. So generally when you get to the corners you want to do your three stitches in the corner and then when you get to the opposite side we're going to do the same as what we've just done. So around the post of the stitch a bit further in when we get to the bobbles and then around the post of the stitch um, of the next row. So go ahead work along the bottom and the side and I'll meet you back once you get to the top of your work again. Okay, so again, I've just worked my way across those two edges. Now I'm on the top edge where we're going to meet ourselves back at the beginning. I have just done my three double crochets into this corner. So for the top edge, you want to go into the next gap that you can see, and then into the cluster. It doesn't really matter hugely exactly where you place this but if you do place the stitch a little bit further into the cluster then just ease off on your tension a little bit so that you're not pulling too tightly in there so into the gap and then into the cluster and into the gap and it's the cluster So I'm just going to work my way to the end and I shall meet you back at this last corner. Okay, so I've just worked my way to this last stitch. I'm going to do two double crochets into that last stitch. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of the next double crochet, which is the first one from this round. So insert your hook into the top of that stitch and then pull through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then going to yarn over and snip off your yarn leaving a good tail end and then you can go ahead and pull that out. So now we're just going to sew in our ends. So you want to thread up your darning needle and we're going to use the rule of three here just so that we know that it's nice and sturdy. You want to weave your needle in to the fibres of the work, going back a good inch or so. Pull your work, don't pull on it too tightly otherwise you'll pull in that stitch at the end and it will make your work a little bit wonky. You want to go back the opposite way trying to grab different fibres. pull through again not pulling too tightly and then once more for the rule of three going back in the opposite way weaving in those ends. Once you've done that you can go ahead and take your scissors and snip off and then do the same with the opposite end. So there you have it, your super simple eco-friendly washcloth and I think you can agree the texture is absolutely gorgeous and it's pretty much the same on both sides. I think there's a very slight difference but um, it looks really, really nice. I also think these make great gifts as well. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with all my latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you again next time. Bye.